Leslie, are you at Brooks Methodist Church with me this morning? Yes, it's Easter Sunday. Welcome, everyone. All right. It's wonderful. Happy Easter to all of you all. What a joy to see all of you all as you all keep coming in. It's great to have you here this morning. A couple things here. Um, I'm going to steal your Connect card since I've put my down. Whoops, my props are cut down. If you would like to fill one of these out and take them to the Welcome Center in the front there, we have a gift for you this morning. Okay. Now, Leslie, when you fill it out, you've got to put more than just your first name, though. If you, yes, if you feel comfortable, put an email address or some way we can contact you and tell you how happy we were that you came today to worship with us. That would be great. Now, speaking of great things happening this week, Saturday morning, we're going to come, we're going to, we get to come back Saturday morning, don't we? Uh, from 8 yes. to noon? 8 to noon this coming Saturday, we are having morning of prayer. And it will be a drop-in in the sanctuary. So come anytime between 8 and 12. And we will have prayer stations with materials that will prompt you to pray for different things. And you can just walk through and pray at your leisure and then leave when you like. Okay, fantastic. 8 to 12 next Saturday. Now, this Sunday after worship, there is a photo booth out there. No bunnies this week. <laughs> no Boo. live bunnies and no goats. That was, it was sheep, not goats. Oh, I thought you were expecting goats. No, I've given up on the goats. Jesus separates the goats and the sheep, and we only get to keep sheep. Okay. But there's a photo booth out there for no sheep, but for all of you all. And um, we're glad you're here this morning. Anything else on the list there? I think that's all. We oh. just want you to feel welcome and know how happy we are that you're worshiping with us. It's a great day, and Christ is alive, and it's good to see you all. Okay, let's get, keep going with worship then. All right, call to worship. Please join me in our call to worship. Out of the darkness of grief and despair comes a message of hope. Christ is risen. Christ is risen we run to the tomb to see for ourselves, and it is true. Christ is risen. We hear a voice call our name, and we know our risen Lord is with us now and always. Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. I heard somebody say one time, but it's not Easter until, until they hear this next song. So please stand as we sing joyously up from the grave he arose number 322. Thank you. 
a flip-flop service this morning, sort of. Got some things out of order. Because the band is going to do our next song, lead our next song, because the words are going to be on the screen. It's not a new song, so maybe some of you have heard it. So please join us as we sing This is Amazing Grace.
confession of faith as found in the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's speak these together with faith from our hearts. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This time we'd like to give you just a few moments to share the joy of Easter and say hello to one another. Would you pass the peace of the Lord?
right, as you're returning to your seats this time, I want to invite the lovely, the talented, and my special wife, Deanne Birch, to come forward and bring your pipes, whatever you got your pipes for. It's children's church time. If you want candy, come forward and pretend you're a kid. Hello. Brian was uh, extra because he's like, mm, you need to come up here, Deanne. I'm so glad you all are here. I brought the pipe, so if Brian goes too long today, I'm just going to pop him with a pipe. So <laughs> we're good. Okay. I need some help. Can you hold one side of this? Come here. Come on. Hold one side. Okay. Now, are, are, are you Della May? You're what, Courtney? Corley, are you Della May? Della May, come over. Come over here on the other side. Okay. Okay. Now, you are God, Corley. You are the rest of humanity, Della May. Okay? So, the reason we celebrate Easter is this thing called sin. It's the sin problem we have. Okay? And there's this huge gulf. Okay? huge valley and you cannot reach now it looks like you can reach but you can't reach it's too big the gulf is too big and that's why we have Easter because we have this sin problem we've all done things that make Jesus sad things that make Jesus uh, upset but there is a way and the way was the cross. Sadie, I need you now. Okay. And hold that up. This represents Jesus. Now see, Jesus can reach across both sides. You want to stay up here? What's your name? What's your name? Amy. Amy? Yeah. Um, uh, okay. You stay up here because we're about to get candy. Okay, um, yeah, we're talking about the cross, Amy, okay? We're talking about the cross. And Jesus is the only one who could reach across and fill that big gulf in between. So that's why we celebrate Easter, because of the sin problem that mankind has. But Jesus made a way for all, us to all be separated. Now, once you take the cross away, then we can all be closer together. So now you guys can scoop closer together because Jesus makes it so that we can have a relationship with him. Dear Jesus, I just want to thank you so much today for every single person uh, here, big and small. And Father, I just want to thank you that you are the only answer to our sin problem and that we can rejoice Father, because um, you have given your son as our savior and you have defeated death. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in worship this morning, Let us go before the Lord in prayer together. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, this is a joyous day, a day of celebration, a day of pondering the miracles that you are able to work, not only in raising your son Jesus from the dead, but also in our own lives. And because of the cross of Jesus, you have given us hope because you raised him from the dead and showed us that nothing is impossible for you. Heavenly Father, we all come before you this morning with different things on our hearts and minds and how amazing and miraculous it is to think that you know the thoughts of our hearts and that you know us better than we know ourselves. This morning, Lord, help us to open our hearts to that love, 
to that relationship that you have offered us. You've offered us forgiveness. You've offered us new life, that we can be a new creation, that the things of our past can be done away with, and we can look forward to a wonderful future. Father, even as we celebrate this morning and are joyful, we know that all are not celebrating in this world. And we take a few moments to come before you and ask for your help for those who need healing. We ask for your help for those who are grieving today and feel a sadness. We ask for your help for those who find themselves without a home or without family around them today. Father, we ask for your help and your comfort for those who are living in communities torn by war, for those who are refugees from their homes. Father, for those who call upon you and are persecuted, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would speak to our hearts this morning, draw us closer to you, help us to believe and have faith in your forgiveness and that Jesus accomplished it all. Lord God, together we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In terms of our offering this morning, I want to give you two numbers, okay, and tell you two different stories about two different places. One of those involves this awesome church where we are committed. It's just part of who we are of doing missions and everything we do. This summer, 26, yeah, 26 folks are going to go on a mission trip to Costa Rica to share the good news of Jesus, to do a lot of repair work, just to be down there and change lives down there. Now, the preacher in me loves it. The fundraiser in me says that's $43,680 we have to raise. That's a lot of money. We're going to get back to that in a second. I'm going to tell you about another story this week I got to hear. There's a church in Maryville, Tennessee, a couple hours from here. They have been given a brand, they got, they got a building, a whole building given to them if they paid off the debt. And if you don't pay off debts in churches, it starts causing interesting things to happen. And the IRS gets involved and the government gets involved. And they said, you know, it'd be really easy if we just pay this thing off. $213,000. I thought $43,000 was a lot of money. $213,000. They could pay off the debt and have that entire building for use for ministry. Many of y'all remember that we were the first church to work with Family Promise, Interfaith Hospitality Network. They've already got it set up that when that church gets paid off, they can go in there and double the number of folks they're helping. They've already discovered out there's a huge need for daytime uh, care for those who have dementia. They've also determined there's a huge need for children of, with disabilities. And they just keep finding more and more ways that God could use this building. But 213,000 needs to be dealt with first. One person in the church heard, one family, let's put it this way, as a family in the church heard about this. And they started praying. And they said, let's go ahead and write a check. We'll help out this ministry. And they said, you know, when they do all these things, they're going to need a little extra cash to make things really happen. So they wrote a check for $275,000. Happened last month. And God is doing new work there. Let's go back to our mission trip. You all are amazing folks. We've already raised $30,000 to go to Costa Rica. 
For those of you who are quick in your math, that's about $13,000 left. I know there's somebody in this church who could write a check for that right now if you wanted to. Or there's 13 of y'all could write a $1,000 check. But it'd be wonderful to be able to say that's taken care of. I've had a handful of times in my life where I've gotten to say quit giving because y'all have given too much. I'm looking forward to that happening again because I know that God wants to use you to transform lives here and around the world. So as we gather this morning, I just want to share that with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for working here this morning. Thank you that you have risen from the dead. And thank you, Lord, that we can use your gifts of your people to change lives all over the place. It's a miracle, Lord. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for the way you're already working in us and all the ways you're changing lives. And we pray now that, Lord, we'd listen to you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the darkness you were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
remain standing as you are able. <laughs> our scripture this morning is John 20, 1 through 18. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. Gasping for breath, she took the, they took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple left immediately for the tomb. They ran neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter. Stooping to look in, he saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, and observed the linen cloths lying there, and the kerchief used to cover his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, to one look at the evidence and believed. No one yet knew from the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples then went back home. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there, dressed in white, one at the head and one at the foot of where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her. Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking he was the gardener, said, Sir, if you took him, tell me where you put him so that I can care for him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning to him, she heard and he, she said in Hebrew, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Jesus said, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples, I saw the master, and she told them everything he had said to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Yeah, it is, the the, it is the blind leading the blind. You're right. <laughs> now, I know some of you got up early this morning to make sure the Easter Bunny came. <laughs> and some of you got up early this morning to make sure we had everything we needed for the sunrise service. So in that case, the following poem may be what your prayer is for the day. Now I lay me down to sleep. The speaker is dull. The subject is deep. If he should stop before I wake, please jab me for pity's sake. <laughs> I realize today each of us comes with a different level of faith this morning. Each of us arrives here this morning thinking about Jesus in a different way. And I am intrigued by that. And I'm also very intrigued by the folks involved there at the tomb. 
and what all they were thinking and what all they were doing. There's two characters at the very beginning. There's a character at the very beginning, Nicodemus. Now, we recall Nicodemus because he was the one who had that very special meal with Jesus. He came at night because that's when rabbis met with their folks who had questions. And I just, I just get this image. It was a very formal meeting where they sat down together and Nicodemus asked his questions and took a little sip. Did they have coffee and tea in those days? I don't know. But they drank and slowly sipped and slowly discuss things. And Jesus asked Nicodemus all these questions. And Nicodemus is like, what do you mean I'm supposed to crawl back in my mother's womb again? That doesn't happen. What do you mean this born again stuff? And Jesus replies back after he has a little sip. You're a teacher of Israel. Don't you understand? And Nicodemus is saying, I don't get it. I don't get it one bit. Help me out here, Jesus. But he's there at the tomb, isn't he? He's there at the tomb when Jesus is buried, and he may not have got it all, but he got enough, didn't he? I know there's a disciple named Thomas who we give all sorts of hard times to because Thomas asked questions. Thomas may not have had the formal teacup and everything when he asked his questions, but he was just as had just as many questions as Nicodemus did, trying to say, Jesus, what do you want from me? How do you want this to happen? I don't get it. I don't get it. Folks, I love it when you ask questions. Some of them I know makes me feel good. Some I have no clue on, and I say, I'll get back to you. If I've not gotten back to you in the last 10 years, because I still don't know the answer. Or I really don't care. But no, I do care. Because Jesus cares about your questions. And Jesus says, your questions are welcome here. Nicodemus asked them, and he's at the tomb. Thomas asked them, and he was one of the twelve. So if you've got questions today about Jesus, you're in the right place with the right folks. Because those are the folks that were there at the tomb. Now there's another guy, Joseph of Arimathea. He's kind of like the coffee, he's like the styrofoam cup guy. He's like, oh, where'd you come from? Here, have a cup of coffee. Have a cup of juice. Who are you, by the way? You just showed up. And why do you already have a tomb built? I mean, who builds a tomb? Who puts who buys a casket and stores it before you die? Well, part of the thing was. In those days, the tradition was the day you die is the day you get buried. Okay? That was the Jewish tradition. So if you're going to prepare ahead, you better have a place for yourself, shouldn't you? Because you never know when you're going to die. But Joseph just shows up. He's this random extra dude with a cool name, Joseph of Arimathea. Ten points if you can spell it correctly. But he just shows up. But in the midst of showing up, Joseph experiences the power of God and is there. Somebody joked the other day on Facebook and said, what do you mean you're going to give up your tomb? Joseph says he only needs it three days. I also think about this coffee cup and the other disciples. We've mentioned Thomas. We're going to get to Peter and John. But there's nine others who don't even show up. There is kind of the dudes that kind of hang around Jesus. And they've all bailed. And it's like, well, how many cups of coffee do we need to have today? We'll just bring a bunch of cups and we'll see what happens. I mean, the good thing about styrofoam cups is they live forever. Ask, check out your local landfill. Just have a bunch of them hanging around. If someone shows up random you don't know, just give them a cup of coffee and say, come join the party. I love what we hear from tradition. Is that from that moment on, from the moment of the resurrection, those disciples, those other ones, the other nine that we don't talk about a whole lot, they are empowered by God and they are 
experienced great faith in God. Now, some of you know what it's like to get powered up, right? Has your cell phone ever died in a strange place? And you've been desperate for a cord? You've been desperate for a plug and the right cord for your phone. Why they make more than one, I don't know. I think it's just to make money or cause me, cause me stress. But that day, those disciples received power. Though that day, they suddenly realized they were part of the God family. They were part of Jesus' family, and they could receive power even though they were kind of on the fringe. Even though they weren't expected, even though a place was not set for them, they could show up at the last minute, and they would be there. All right. I, got, I was scared someone threw my cup away. Now I love Peter. Peter's my favorite disciple, really, because he does everything wrong. Peter reminds me of the guy you meet at McDonald's every day. You know, you come in there, you, fill your, you buy your cup. They don't let you refill it while you, between visits. You go buy a new cup. I get that. You buy your cup, and you, you know, get that unsweet tea for a dollar. Whatever. It's actually going more than a dollar now. Sadness. But Peter reminds me of somebody who sees Jesus every day. Says, hey, Jesus, how you doing? And they talk. And they're friends. And they hang out together. And they talk about what's going on. And God steps in. And he and Jesus build this amazing relationship. A, a, a relationship so deep that Peter's able to walk on water. Peter understands who Jesus is. He is the Messiah, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. It's that casual, good friend relationship that says, hey, I get you. I understand you. And the good part is, not only does Peter understand Jesus, Jesus understands Peter. Because, see, you remember Peter? Peter? He's the one who fumbled the ball, wasn't he? Three times he drops the ball. Three times he says, no, I don't know Jesus. One time he even starts cussing and says, I have no idea who that man is. And Jesus hears them all. In the midst of that, Jesus says, you are forgiven. No matter what you've gone through, you are forgiven forgiven so today i don't know what kind of faith you come with maybe today you're like nicodemus and you come with lots and lots of questions go for it i am not scared about your questions because i believe that jesus has a valid answer for all of them and we can deal with those questions because we have a god who can handle questions and maybe today you're just kind of feeling like i'm just floating along grandma said if i don't come i don't get lunch so i'm here and so you show up. And you feel like you're just the extra person at the party. They throw you a styrofoam plate and a styrofoam cup and some plastic silverware and said, here, enjoy the feast. And you're thinking, well, they didn't plan on me showing up. Am I really invited? Do they really care about me? Or maybe you're like Peter. You want to be there. You get it all straight, but, oh, man, you have made some mistakes along the way, and you know that... You deserve to be flushed, dropped from the team, if nothing else. And Jesus says, no, not you. And then there's Mary Magdalene. Actually, the Bible's got a whole bunch of Marys. If you can't figure them all out, don't worry. There's more in there than you might realize. And there's deep debate about which Mary does which. But I love the, these Marys. They are there at the crucifixion they watch jesus die they are there at the burial they see jesus put in that brand new tomb it's never been used they see joseph arimathea with that fancy name and nicodemus take care of him and they say they didn't do it right they're men and they say we're going to come back and fix it right you know these are the folks who bring you cups they bring cups of coffee for each other in the morning these are the ladies who hang out together and say, hey, we're friends. And they're going to reuse their cups over and over again 
They go to Aldi. This mine, mine came from Aldi's. I like it. It's a pretty cup. I think it's my wife's. That's why it's still pretty. In fact, it's still got a tag on it, too. All right, it's a new cup. I'm claiming it. But I realize Mary is one of these things that says our faith just keeps going. We recycle the cups because nothing stops in our faith. And what I love most about Mary is that her faith is persistent. It says no matter what happens, I'm not giving up. I'm going to continue on day in and day out, whether the weather's pretty or the weather's bad, whether my family shows up or not, whether they even have this thing called a pandemic or not. I'm not quitting. I'm staying with Jesus. And I'm not leaving until I see him. I'm not leaving until I experience Jesus. And maybe that's what you are here today. You're saying, I came here today. Oh, I knew there was going to be good music. I knew there were, there were going to be lilies everywhere. And some, you knew that someone was going to pull all the little thingy bobbers out, the stainums, I think it is, so they don't st- cause you to be out allergic. And you're like, I know this church. It's going to be a solid place to worship Jesus this morning. And that's good because I am going to always be there. But I came not for those things this morning. I came for Jesus, and that's all I came for. And that's what I want. If you've got that kind of faith, keep it going. Don't let it stop. There's one other character that comes at the, up, up there. He's carrying a cup like mine. You can tell I love my cup. I've, I don't know what this, I think the side was for some dental ad. I don't know. I just, it just keeps falling off every time I wash it. And I scrape off some more. and I'm going to make it a, one of these days it's going to be a pretty metal cup. I love it. It keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. And I just, it does its job. It's a good cup. It reminds me a lot of John, John the Apostle. He's not quitting, is he? From everything we can tell, he was the last disciple to leave the cross. He was the one who was there when Jesus said, look at your mother, Mary, look at your son. You two take care of each other. He's the one who runs first and gets the tomb first. He is the disciple who says, I am with you. You can depend on me. And maybe that's who you are today. You're the one that Jesus says, I can depend on you. When someone says, I am counting on Christ, you can say, Christ can count on me because I'm not leaving. I'm there every step of the way. Because just like this cup, you keep the holy things sacred and you keep the unholy things away. I like John. I like John because of who he is and what he stands for. It's a quiet kind of faith. It's a faith that says, you know what? I've got this. And no matter where we go, I'm going with it. I don't proclaim it from the rooftops. I just get it done. Now, Leslie, in addition to all the other things you do perfectly around this place, you're also going to take care of all our youth, don't you? And sometimes you may wonder, Leslie, does anybody ever listen? I think all they do is come to check out the girls, play computer games, eat the food, and go home. Well, I'll share this with you, Leslie. I remember a story from my youth pastor, and that was a few days ago. I hate to admit. I grew up in Cleveland, Tennessee, and Back in those days, we were talking about the Okoye River, and they'd just gotten, a, they'd gotten all those rapids going really well. And he said, I want to tell you about coming to faith. He says, some of you were little children when you came to Jesus. It's like you crawl, you're playing in the creek one day, one of those little feeder creeks that goes into the Okoye River, and you're just playing in the creek, and you start on one side, and suddenly you play, and you play, and you play, and you threw the rocks around, and suddenly you found yourself on the other side. You had crossed the creek, and you were on the other side. You were on the side of faith. Now, if you've noticed creeks, they get a little deeper, and they kind of turn into little small things, and and they have holes in them where you have to kind of, can't quite wade through, but you have to almost swim through them. 
And maybe you are a young person or someplace else in your life, and you have gotten in the creek, you've played this a little bit bigger now, you can't just rock hop across, but you actually have to get completely wet. And you went over, and you start on one side, and you remember getting wet. You remember the rap, you remember the tug of the current, but you got over to the other side, and you were on the side of faith. Now, there's some folks who decide to cross in the middle of the Ocoee, in the middle of the biggest rapids. You know, the ones right there by the electrical plant? Or maybe up there in the new section where they've got the... Well, it's actually not new anymore. I'm sorry, I'm getting older. Show my signs here. Up there where they ran the uh, Olympics. And it's turbulent. I bet you wouldn't want to cross the river right there, would you? You would say, there's got to be a better way. But perhaps that's what your faith was like. It was turmoil. You felt you got sucked under. You got batted back to side. You came off the other side just about de- near dead from drowning. But you crossed. And you said, I am on the side of faith. Now, if you've noticed the Coe River, it runs down into Parksville Lake. Coe Lake number three. Now, Every year, Okoe Lake number three gets smaller because they fill it full of dirt. And there's trees going down there and grass, that sort of stuff. But it's kind of like the lake out here, isn't it? If you crossed it, you could probably swim across it. You just float along enough times, do some backstroke for a while, breathe and rest. It'd take you a while, but you could do it. You start off at Joe, Joe and Susie's dock and just swim across the lake, couldn't you? It'd take you far, it'd take a couple of hours, maybe, depending how fast you swim. And the thing is, you're just persistent. You just don't give up. But you got to the other side. What I remember from my youth pastor, he said, it doesn't matter how or when you got to the other side. The question is, did you get to the side of faith? And this Easter morning, as we celebrate that Christ is risen, I ask us, have we gotten to the other side? Do we have a faith? Like Nicodemus, who had lots of questions, but said, I'm not quitting until I get my questions answered. Do we have a faith like Joseph of Arimathea, who just kind of shows up, but experiences great power from God? Do we have one like Peter? Perhaps you have fumbled the ball more than once, and you're saying, God... You shouldn't even be looking at me. I shouldn't even be in your church. It's probably going to fall down on me. In fact, I better move away from the balcony because it may just crash down on me. Jesus says, "Uh uh-uh. If you've crossed over, you're forgiven. You're on my side. Maybe you're like Mary Magdalene. and You're saying, I've been persistent, God, but I need a fresh breath of your air. I need a fresh reminder of how much you love me. I need to know you're still there. God can do that. He really can. Maybe you're like John. You're really quiet about your faith. And you're not giving up on Jesus. Because you know Jesus is not giving up on you. I pray today God would speak through you and give a blessing to others. Because John wrote a gospel. John lived out a life. In fact, third most proficient writer, prolific writer in the, in the New Testament about all the things that God has done. God can use you too. All right, that Yehu who fell asleep during my sermon, wake him up now. And let's stand up and let's praise God this morning. Band, you guys ready? This, ooh, this is the second song that everybody wants to sing on Easter. Usually the choir gets it. Today you get it, and let us proclaim loudly, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the is risen
Christ is risen indeed, and therefore we can go forth from this place because Christ is alive and Christ lives in you. Amen.